a lot of guys that stepped into those uh, bungee stip, uh, stick traps, they lost their legs. And because most of the sticks were laced with feces, so you would get an infection right away. And that was my first fear, not coming back with my legs. As a matter of fact, when I was in the plane going to Vietnam, I prayed to the Lord and said, if I'm not supposed to come back, don't let me come back. But if I'm supposed to come back, I want to come back in one piece. And uh, our uh, point man got hit in the legs. Our um, squad leader, he got hit in the throat. And uh, we had four South Vietnamese soldiers that were hit. Three of them died and one survived. And um, at that uh, particular mission, we used to rotate point man, uh, machine gunner, um, grenade launcher, everybody. We all had to knew, know how to use each individual weapon. So in case one guy got hit, we could take over. So we had two M79, M79 grenade launchers and the other NCO who was um, 11 Bravo, his uh, 79, the firing pin broke. So he came to the rear because I was rear guard at the time and I was guarding the uh, radio man because we, we didn't want him up there. He was one guy that wasn't supposed to get hit because we had to have communications. So uh, when he came, the uh, NCO came over, he told me, give me your 79, because mine broke. I said, no, I never give up my weapon. I said, I'll go up there and I'll shoot whatever I have to, all my ammunition, and you stay here and guard the rear. So that's what I did. I went up there, I spent my 20 rounds, that what I carried. And after that, um, I, got, I grabbed the M16 from one of the guys that got injured, and I fired that. And after we were all running out of ammunition, because we don't carry that much ammunition, our mission was to uh, do reconnaissance. So they said, okay, we're going to call in artillery. We're going to pull back. Well, as we were crawling back, that's when I got hit in the back of the head. And um, I thought I was dead. But uh, later on, they told me in um, Camp Drake, Japan, that uh, I had been unconscious for 13 days in the hospital before they flew me out of Vietnam. And uh, that's about it. That's how I, I got wounded. There's a lot of things that, in Vietnam that I don't remember, but certain ones I do remember. And uh, what I remember most is... Uh, I'm sorry. sorry. The guy that, um, when I got hit, they told me I stood up and I just dangling my arm, but I was standing up and I couldn't move. I could hear the rounds going by and uh, another NCO came and knocked, tackled me and knocked me down. And then while I was in Japan, I found out that in the next mission, he got killed. And that, I'm sorry, it still affects me okay, yeah. to know that. Yep. And I also see another person, he was a, uh, a ranger, and he had a scout dog, a dog with him. And uh, I saw him in Vietnam. He got shot six times in the back. And he was in a, this metal wheel suspended and I was walking by and uh, I happened to look in that room. I don't know, something told me look in there and I saw him and he was looking at me and that look I never forget. <laughs> Those two things is what haunts, haunts me the most. When I came out, I couldn't find a job. Nobody will hire a Vietnam veteran. I went to training and uh, for a mechanic, I still couldn't get a job. Finally, when I went to the unemployment, uh, the counselor there told me, uh, you know, there's some uh, training for Vietnam veterans that you want to take some training? 
And I said, yeah, I'll take it. So I went to a uh, special school for uh, electrical. 